gang, and welcome to High Country Addiction, the only Western-style hunting program that showcases not only our outdoor experiences, but yours as well. We're all about family, friends, and tradition, and I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm Jared. And I don't understand what I did wrong. Where is Alfred at? Um, I'm not sure. He gave me a phone call the other day and said, show up. So here I am. Now, we know you're on vacation, buddy. Enjoy it. So Al who, who are you, Jared? You know what? I'm a Albuquerque resident, born and raised. My dad started me off bow hunting at 11 years old, my, my best friend and my mentor. And I don't think you can beat chasing bull elk in the rut. You know, how cool is that? It was pretty awesome. And if you've never been hunting before and want to know more about it, join us as we take you out west on a high country expedition. All right, guys, right now, go to the fridge, take out a quarter chicken, open up the lid on your Traeger, put it in there, Come back and watch it because it'll be done by the end of this show. We have one really cool, really long hunt. These guys go by horseback into Wyoming. So kick back, relax, and let's check out this hunt. So we've talked about this. I mean, this is kind of one of my dream hunts, you know, getting the horses, the, the packs and all that stuff, the, the canvas tents, heading out in the hills. These guys went 14 miles in, super deep into the wilderness. And I mean, just talk about an overall experience. How cool is that? Yeah, that's that's definitely a true backcountry hunt at its best. Hard part about that is you got to be prepared for anything out there. I mean, 14 miles away, a lot can happen out there, but it would be a lot of fun. It looks like they're pretty high up too, you know what I mean? I mean, looks like an old burn area. There's not a whole lot of trees. It's pretty sparse in there, more barren than I would have expected it. Yeah, but I mean, they get into them right away, right off the bat when they start coming out, there's there's elk all over the place. Yeah, I mean, it looks like there might be kind of in the rut too. I mean, there's already a bull pushing a little group of cows. Looks like they're pretty active right away, like you said. I mean, check out the views. And, and tell me, you this is not one of your dream hunts. Yeah, just goes for miles. So, and it's an archery hunt. So, you know, they're gonna be working it, hitting the calls heavy. Um, they had a lot of responses when I talked to him. He said they had a lot of responses. So right now they're setting up for their very first morning hunt. It looks like they're setting up in those you know, those thick draws in there too. Most of those elk will probably be heading to those draws later in the morning to bed yeah. down and spend the day in there. And there wasn't very many, so. Nice Sticks them right yeah, there. Right away. Stop it real fast. I want you guys to watch where that first hunter was because I've never ever seen this before. That first hunter is sitting down, kneeling down next to that tree. We'll go ahead and start rolling. I want you to pay attention to the next hunter that comes in where exactly he's at. So camera zooms in towards the bull that he shot at. If you look on that little ridge line over on the other side of that draw, there's another big bull right. sitting right over the top. Yep, and that is a nice That's bull. A big bull. These guys had elk nonstop. And they're screaming, they're bugling all around them. Yeah. Yeah, so those bulls are gonna take off straight to those draws, those thicks that are over there on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's where they're comfortable. That's where they spend most of their time. You know, that's kind of a comfort zone for them, especially after they're shot. That's gonna be where they go to to spend their day or even expire. Yeah. All right, go ahead and stop real fast. Remember first hunter? I do. Remember the tree he was sitting next to? Yep. This is not the same hunter. This is number two, same spot, same setup. Have, have you ever seen that happen? Uh, I have one time myself, but not that close. Yeah. <laughs> Good 
shooting, fellas. Well. <laughs> All right, see, so they have so much action coming in. This bull comes over the top of the ridge. He stands up and literally walks up to get a better shot. That bull still stands there, yep. walks off a little tiny bit. This is another thing about being 14 miles back. Those, those bulls didn't really scare easy. Right. They didn't really take off. So he gets up on top of that ridge to get an opportunity at another shot. Right. Stop it real fast. Okay, you remember the first hunter? Yep. Sitting next to the tree? Right. You remember the second hunter? Yep. Sitting next to the tree? Yep. You, I, I think I want to sit next to that tree. I, that's, that's what I'm talking about. But I don't, yeah, that's. I want to take that tree with me every time <laughs> I hunt. Yeah, it's a lucky yeah. tree. It's a lucky tree. All right, go ahead and start it. They must be doing something right with those cow calls though, huh? I guess so. Looks around, looks yep. around. She doesn't know where they're at. What? And now that uh, must be right in the middle of the rut because all these bulls are, and they kind of seem like satellite bulls, you know, they're not huge. That one bull on the other side yeah. of the canyon was quite a bit bigger, but yeah. But uh, these all seem to be satellite bulls looking for, for, looking for a girlfriend. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a highway for elk. You know, I almost wonder if it's a, a transition area between a daytime area and, you know, the nighttime area, feeding zone to a bedding zone or something like yeah, that. Yeah, could be. So at this point, they're still cow calling very aggressively. And these bulls are just coming back for more time and time again. Yeah, they're just holding in. I mean, it's, they're not going anywhere whatsoever. Yep. If anything, they're still coming in. I mean, the bulls that come in where they have an opportunity to shoot, are walking away, but it just sets up another elk, another right. bull to start moving back down. Right. So do you think all these elk are part of the same herd, or do you think if that if that main herd bull were to take off, would those other bulls hang around? I don't think they're the same herd. They're, if you watch the video, there's so many elk. Yeah. I mean, they go from one day to the next day to the next day to the next day, and it's just elk, elk, elk. Yeah. So I, I think they're just at a perfect spot where these guys are just coming down and going through. So obviously these elk still don't even know they're there after all this activity. No, not at all. Wow, Ryan, those guys are hunting in some incredible looking country out there in the wilderness. Have you ever hunted elk out there in the wilderness like that? Nothing that looks like that. That is absolutely beautiful. We have to plan a trip to Wyoming. Absolutely. You know what, guys? We have so much more to show you. Come back after the break, check out some more high country addiction. This is for the person stuck in the office, the nine to fiver, the person who eats, sleeps, and drinks the outdoors. During business hours, you play the part, and in the mountains, you're home. But on the water, you go with the flow. This is for the angler, the hiker, the hunter, the adventurer, and you. Shop the Christmas sale going on now. I block the wind, the cold. I block the rain, noise, and smells. I block the voice in your head that says, go home. Scent blocker.
Before you go viral, make an appointment with Feedy Family Dentistry, now with two locations to serve you in Albuquerque and Rio Rancho. Hey gang, and welcome back to High Country Addiction, the only Western style hunting program that showcases not only our outdoor experiences, but yours as well. All right, so we're watching the guys in Wyoming. Well, let's take a break real fast and check out some more High Country approved products from our friend Jason over at Canyon Coolers. Jason, thank you so much for coming back down, buddy. Ryan, thank you. Have me anytime. We're happy to be here. So what is this? This is so cool looking. All right, it might look like a dry bag, but this is the Canyon Coolers Quest Soft Cooler. Wow. So it's fully insulated uh, and fully portable. We've got a great backpack system set up in here. So now when you have uh, more portable needs, we can help you out on the go. And that is cool. Now these things, I've seen them all over social media. It's just starting to blow up. What, what are those? This is the uh, Canyon Adventure Tumbler. We have them in two sizes, the 20 ounce and the 30 ounce. And we did a nice slide close lid on top. So it makes mixing those protein drinks or margarita a lot easier to do. It'll also accommodate straws if you and I start to wear lipstick. All right. Okay, so there's a little bit of a secret and a rumor kind of going around that you guys have this, this, uh, this new product that's coming out early spring. What, what is that about? What's, what's going on? That's the new Canyon Mule. It's a, finally a premium cooler, but now we have six inch off-road tires on it. Oh, wow. It's a smaller size, but we went overboard with the insulation. We've got almost three inches of insulation on this. 14 different tie down points, It'll be the ultimate for tailgating or getting down the road. The extra insulation is gonna blow everyone away for ice retention, and we've even got a built-in bottle opener. How cool is that? And the warranty with that one, I mean, it's still gonna be the same thing that you guys offer? Like all of our hard coolers, it's a lifetime, no hassle warranty. Uh, and it even includes some jungle cord on top that really lets you attach anything to the top of that ice chest you need to, and it helps you move your stuff around. All right, well, I can't wait to check that out. And you guys can check it out too on uh, canyoncoolers.com and check out the other coolers that we have as well over at Sportsman's Warehouse. So we've watched the guys up in Wyoming. They've already been successful on getting a couple of shots off. Let's see what happens next. You know, we had all, had all these satellite bulls coming in. No, no big daddies, no big papas. And then we got these immature spike bulls that are, the funny thing is they're not, they're not the ones that have come in yet. Right. Like, you know, yeah. they typically are the first ones to come in. And those spikes, you know, they're the most curious because they're usually on the farthest outskirts of the herd. Yeah. You know, you got the spikes and then some satellite bulls and then cows and then the main herd bull in the middle. He's protected by everybody else. Yeah. So that's actually a pretty nice bull right there. It looks like he's been playing around in some water too. He's pretty dirty. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that is a nice bull. Yeah, he's been wallowing a little bit and getting some mud thrown on him. It looks like he's got a little limp. Yep. Going on too. So He's moving a little slow. Yeah, Big Papa may have been pushed out. Let's see if he can come up the hill. And there's that curious spike there still. Looking for the cow calls. And behind him, elk going through the trees. Yeah. It's just nonstop. Yeah, these are all the only, only the elk we see. Yeah. How many elk that we don't see are behind them. So here we're gonna pan out and look over the hills and what, what do we see? More bulls. More, more bulls. That's a decent yeah. bull there. Yeah, Papa's now he's going after he's going after the mamas. Yep. And I think there's a certain point, you know, I don't know how many, how much closer these guys have got to this herd bull, or even if that is the herd bull, but once you get to a certain point, you he's gonna get angry and he's gonna come see what the heck's what's going on. going on. Yeah, somebody might be threatening his herd. Yeah. What do you think? They're what, 150? No, they're they're probably what, 300 yards. Oh my gosh! 400 yards. I would I would say at least 400 yards. Yeah, yeah that's a long ways. So this is pretty cool. These guys go ahead, still aggressively cow calling. They go into their western ninja style. See yeah, the they stance. have to. They have yeah. to. They're in the middle of nothing. That's right. You know, so they, they get their Western cover. Ninja style and they're crouching down and getting in there and they get set up on a really nice bull. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if he gets a shot. And they are in the wide open. That's hard to do. Yeah.
This is a decent bull. Yeah, it comes is. up on the ridge. No shot. Nope. Nah. So what do they do? They break into their Western Ninja. Get closer. Start crouching down. Here we go, Western Ninja. And he's still going on that call. Yep. So that's probably, that might be that wallow where that bull had just came from yeah. that we were talking about. That was muddy and wet. You know, this is what they do when they're in the middle of the rut. They're yeah. hot, they're overheated. Um, they're getting Jared. They're getting Jared, <laughs> getting dirty. And that's nice how open that country is. You can get a cameraman pretty far behind that's you. Right. You don't have to worry about him busting that elk or that yeah. elk seeing you at all. Got a shot and just kind of chilling and walking out. Yep, and I'm sure they're still blowing them cow calls yeah, and trying to calm him down. Dude. You know, it's funny, he's actually heading uphill most of the time you shoot an elk and then things go downhill. And there he goes into the thick timber, you know, his comfort zone. They're resilient, they're tough animals. They're real tough animals. And those guys that shot that bull probably didn't even know where it went. You know, the camera guy on top could see it, but those guys being so low, they might not have been able to see where it went. Yeah. Only 10% of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. We spend six hours a day in front of a screen. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. This is for the person stuck in the office. The nine to fiver. The person who eats, sleeps, and drinks the outdoors. During business hours, you play the part. And in the mountains, you're home. But on the water, you go with the flow. This is for the angler, the hiker, the hunter, the adventurer, and you. Shop the Christmas sale going on now. I block the wind, the cold. I block the rain, noise, and smells. I block the voice in your head that says, go home. Scent blocker. Before you go viral, make an appointment with Feedy Family Dentistry, now with two locations to serve you in Albuquerque and Rio Rancho. So some people might call this a five pointer, some people might call this a five by five or a ten pointer. I personally call it a five by five. What would you call that? Well, five by five. If I was in Kansas, I'd say ten point. Yeah. If you were in Arizona, you'd say five point. So 
So what I'll probably do is I'll judge my bull based off the days of my hunt, what day it is, and then count my antlers. You know me, I'm not a big time, it doesn't have to be a big bull. Um, if it's gonna come to antlers, I'd like uniqueness. It doesn't have to sure. be huge. It doesn't yeah. have to be a 380. If it's crazy looking, just wacky, I, I, that's, I love that. The uniqueness of it, yeah. yeah. And some of these elk have cows and some of these elk don't have cows. So the elk that don't have the cows are gonna be a little bit easier to call in. You know, those bigger bulls with the cows, they're gonna be a lot more weary and harder to bring in with them calls. Well, and that's one thing that you can judge off this hunt too. The amount of cows that are out there and the amount of bulls, if this rut just started, it's gonna last a while because yep. there are so many bulls out there that are gonna try to challenge. Yep. Uh, this, this is perfect timing. I mean, these guys hit it right at the right position. Yeah, and those ester cycles of those cows, you know, they don't all happen at once. Yeah. You know, so they'll continue to go on through the month of September and probably even in October as well. Yeah. Looks like they're getting a pretty good hell storm there. Yeah. So this is what we were talking about, that dream hunt. I mean, having their tent set up, got the horses. I mean, this is just a cool hunt. Yeah. Everything about it. Yep. And you have to be prepared for that bad weather. You know, you can be out there on the top of that ridge line, they can start dumping rain. And once you get wet, you're miserable. That's right. At 14 miles on horseback, I've never done it. I don't know how long it takes to get there, but you got 14, 14 miles to get back. Yep. Uh, you want to make sure that you guys are geared up right. Absolutely. Can't just run back to the truck and get your jacket you left under the seat. No. <laughs> Everything about this hunt has just been awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They get to see a lot of things most people don't ever get to see in their lives. Yep. So here's a scenario. You just came down the mountain. You just had a bear. It gets worse. You get into the bottom of the mountain, and then there's wolves. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little unnerving. Well, you know. Especially when you got 600 pounds of meat on your horse. <laughs> Can you see this one down in the bottom still? Oh yeah. How cool is this to be driving out? I always love that feeling, driving home with a big elk rack hanging out of the bed of the truck. Yeah, not just one, but a few. It's icing on the cake. That's right. Great job, guys. Wow, Ryan, that was an epic hunt. Have you ever been blessed enough to hunt elk off horseback before? I haven't. So call me, I would love to go. I'd kind of like to go myself. So. You can't go. I, I'm okay, a great you can go, you can go. We need somebody to cook. Hey guys, stick around after the break. Check out some more High Country Addiction. This is for the person stuck in the office. The nine to fiver. The person who eats, sleeps, and drinks the outdoors. During business hours, you play the part. And in the mountains, you're home. But on the water, you go with the flow. This is for the angler, the hiker, the hunter, the adventurer, and you. Shop the Christmas sale going on now. I block the wind, the cold. I block the rain. noise and smells. I block the voice in your head that says, go home. Scent blocker.
before you go viral, make an appointment with Feedy Family Dentistry, now with two locations to serve you in Albuquerque and Rio Rancho. Only 10% of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. We spend six hours a day in front of a screen. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. Hey gang, and welcome back to High Country Addiction, the only Western style hunting program that showcases not only our outdoor experiences, but yours as well. And I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm Jared. All right, the coolest part of the show for us, we get to reflect, kick back, relax, and sit in our chairs. So this hunt today, the guys over at High Country Savages, man, absolutely insane. Horseback, 14 miles back in the country, literally seemed like it was untouched. Got out there, did what they did, and came out with all those bulls. Absolutely insane. Good job, guys. Yeah, that was definitely an epic hunt for sure. And remember, it's always important to respect the animals we hunt so we can pass that on to future generations. That's right, guys. And always remember, family, friends, and tradition. We'll see you later on High Country Addiction. Mm -hmm.